back to my channel and thank you so much for being here. Today we're going to be talking all about sensitive skin and rosacea. So before we get started, hit that subscribe button, share this video if you think somebody might like it, and let's do it. All right, so we're going to kind of get your tea, get your wine, get your water. Uh, we're going to have a good discussion about sensitive skin and specifically rosacea. We're going to go through some of the products that are recommended for rosacea, what rosacea is, products that rosacea and sensitive skin sufferers find irritating, as well as two really great ingredients or products that you might want to include into your routine if you are of this skin type. And then we're also going to be talking about internal health and why I think it's really important for everyone, but specifically for people that are rosacea, sensitive skin, acne, um, skin types. Uh, before we get into this, I will want to start out with this is by saying I am not a medical doctor. Um, yes, I have many years of research and skin therapy expertise, but I am not a doctor. So please, if you think you have rosacea or you know, you think that you need um, some sort of help in that area, please go speak to your plastic surgeon, general practitioner, your dermatologist um, to actually diagnose you with rosacea. Um, they're going to be the best person to ask. They know your whole medical history. And so what I'm going to be doing today is just sharing some general facts with you that you might be able to take along with you um, and maybe incorporate into your routine. But please, by all means, go with what your doctor says. Um, uh, they are the people that know you the best. All right, so let's talk about rosacea. Rosacea, sensitive skin, acne, they're really all about inflammation. Inflammation in the skin, and in my take, and in my research, and in my thought process, it's also inflammation in the body. Um, rosacea, there are four different types. Um, they range in severity. You can have flare-ups, things like alcohol, fatty foods, fried foods can really lead to flushing of the skin. Um, rosacea sufferers can obviously suffer from flare-ups in the skin, redness, uh, actually uh, bumps, texture, whiteheads on the skin. It's really a very common skin condition, to be honest with you. Uh, sensitive skin types that have not been diagnosed as rosacea can suffer from some of the same situations, um, and it's something that honestly needs to be handled with kid gloves. Uh, this is not something to mess around with. If you have sensitive skin, rosacea, acne, you really need to be very cognizant and and protect your skin as much as possible. I have a bunch of notes here, um, and I want to start out with something that the National Rosacea Society has talked about, which is making sure the key to really getting rosacea under wraps is a constant and consistent and gentle skincare routine. Um, they say the keys to this is to use products and techniques that minimize irritation. Uh, they've done a couple of different studies with people that, um, across the board in their uh, clinics and studies, um, and they basically have compounded some of the top reasons that lead to irritation in rosacea and sensitive skin sufferers. Um, in their st surveys they conducted, these are the irritants that they found most prominent, and I would agree with most of them. Alcohol, witch hazel, fragrance, uh, menthol, peppermint, eucalyptus oil, benzoyl peroxide, um, as well as some silicones. And that is definitely uh, some of those really top ingredients that you want to make sure that your skincare does not have in it if you are a rosacea sufferer. According to the Academy of uh, the American Academy of Dermatology, fragrance causes more allergic contact dermatitis than any other ingredients, specifically in this uh, skin type. Now you know that uh, you know synthetic fragrances I do not enjoy, but essential oils or natural occurring fragrances do not bother my skin. I don't have sensitive skin. So if you are a sensitive skin type, that is one of the first things I want you to pull out of your full routine, out of your cleansers, serums, moisturizers, and as well as your makeup if possible. 
you will see a differencing of opinion a lot from dermatologists in this field but they also for the main re for the mainstream they will agree that all of those products that I've just said are going to be irritants okay some other irritants that actually many dermatologists as well as Dr. Deborah Jamal she's an MD on the board of dermatology in New York she's also an assistant professor um, of dermatology she actually says that be very cautious of anti-aging ingredients like glycolic acid um, as well as exfoliants like physical exfoliants, toners, and astringents um, that can be very detrimental to rosacea sufferers. Um, that's why it's very hard to treat um, rosacea and sensitive skin when they're kind of, when you guys are piling on some of these aggressive acids. Um, I will talk to you about though some of the great ingredients that could potentially be benefits to people that have rosacea. This is actually said by uh, the doc dermatologist Dr. Emmy Graber out of Boston. She actually states that green tea, niacinamide, feverfew may actually relieve discomfort in the skin. So those are some of the ingredients that can actually calm the skin, feed the skin, um, allow it to have antioxidants and really heal the skin. Um, she also goes on to say that niacinamide might be the most promising and has been the most scientifically studied. So if you are using niacinamide and if you are a curology client, you'll notice that they put niacinamide in a lot of their combinations because it is widely studied that niacinamide can be a huge benefit to uh, rosacea sufferers. The other ingredient that I want to talk to you about is alzaic acid. And I have something here that I'll talk to you about in one second. Now, now, alzaic acid obviously comes in a prescription strength as well as over the counter um, and the studies that have been done on alzaic acid really are more about the prescription strength so I really want to make that clear so the claims that have been made about alzaic acid really are about 15% um, or higher and really the sweet spot is 15% of the alzaic acid have been studied to actually give great benefits to rosacea sufferers calming redness calming irritation also helping with the acne flare-ups that they get um, from rosacea. Um, alzaic acid is actually a natural occurring acid that helps soothe the skin, thereby reducing redness uh, while treating the whiteheads and other blemishes like we just said. Um, over the counter and it is dermatologist available like we said and they really recommend doing it twice a day but building very slowly when you use this product. Um, it has anti-inflammatory properties which is important for rosacea and the FDA actually has approved it as the primary treatment for rosacea at 15%. Okay, so that's really important to remember. Also, zinc and titanium dioxide, which is common, uh, really, those are obviously physical blockers in sunscreen, can really help, uh, you know, rosacea sufferers because the sun can actually cause flare-ups for rosacea and sensitive skin, and you need to protect them with a physical sunscreen like titanium dioxide and zinc because the sun is one of those common factors in flushing and breakouts. Uh, chemical sunscreen has potentials to further irritate rosacea and sensitive skin uh, sufferers, all right? That's why we talk about physical in my, on my channel a little bit more because it is more tolerable for sensitive skin types. Another ingredient that uh, another dermatologist that I found talks about is obviously vitamin C and hyaluronic acid and peptides, but the peptide needs to be a stable form, so please buy your ingredients or your products from reputable companies. Um, they do recommend retinols, uh, very gentle retinols, so a low percentage of Retin-A or a low percentage of an over-the-counter retinol. It does help with that cell turnover and unclogging the pores and fine lines, so that's something that you might want to reach for for anti-aging. But the one thing to remember here that the dermatologist, Dr. Deborah uh, Gilliman from New York, she says that it's a delicate balance. So um, apply this, you know, vitamin C, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and retinols in a delicate manner and really proceed with caution. You will always want to never introduce a new product if you're having a rosacea flare-up, okay? When you're having a rosacea flare-up, you back off of everything and really feed the skin. You also want to start dilating 
diluting your retinols, niacinamide, uh, things of that nature when you are um, having a flare-up or when you are rosacea or sensitive skin sufferer. You are going to need to approach this much more gently. Um, as it's said by many dermatologists and by um, many, you know, the rosacea um, studies, uh, AHAs, BHAs are going to be definitely something that you proceed with caution if you are a rosacea or sensitive skin sufferer. Um, it's something that needs to be handled with kid gloves. It's not something that I don't really recommend for rosacea sufferers to use all that often, maybe even just once a week or twice a week. Um, even cleansing tools are not my favorite thing for rosacea sensitive skin sufferers because you're really stimulating that blood flow and you're really irritating that skin. However, there are different um, levels of sensitivity when we're dealing with rosacea and sensitive skin. So maybe you just have a very small amount of rosacea and you can use a cleansing tool once a week and that works well for you. Um, and that's totally fine. But if you are really suffering with rosacea, I really, really recommend you be very cognizant and careful while using cleansing tools as well as physical exfoliants, okay, as well as even washcloths. Um, that's why really relying on uh, retinols, a gentle form retinol that's diluted, or something like alizaic acid. Um, this one is actually from Paula's Choice. I started to incorporate this. This is a 10% alizaic acid. This is their booster. So you actually can incorporate this into your moisturizer or your essence or something of that nature. This is a fantastic one. It's well formulated and it really will prove results and it is gentle enough. So this is something that I would really look into if you're not into getting a prescription strength of alzaic acid um, because it is um, really a nice percentage to 10%. It also has uh, licorice and salicylic acid in it. So it's a very light, um, you know, base of licorice and salicylic acid. So uh, this is one of my favorites to recommend. Now, uh, let's talk about one more ingredient, and it's propolis, okay? Now, I don't talk about this a lot, but this is a really cool ingredient. Now, propolis is actually made by honeybees, but listen to this. It's kind of long, so bear with me for a second, but it's really interesting. So, um, trees, okay? Trees have to survive in, against environmental aggressors every day, all day. So they have created a strong immunity of plant phenol chemicals and bioflavonoids to protect themselves or defend themselves. Then bees piggyback off of these trees' powerful immune system. They um, harvest this immunity, boosting tree secretions like sap, um, et cetera, and add enzymes uh, to produce the end product that is antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, which is known as propolis, okay? If you are more into natural ingredients and something that has been studied quite a bit, propolis might be something that you really wanna reach for. And I'll put a couple of uh, products in the description box that are in the propolis uh, section of this. So propolis is amazing. It's such a really cool ingredient that nobody talks about, I feel like. So what it does is it reduces redness. It also helps with pigmentation. It boosts collagen, antioxidants, uh, antioxidant protection, and it's very, very gentle and very, very tolerable by rosacea and gentle um, and sensitive skin um, you know, sufferers. It is really honestly something that I think needs to be talked about more um, because you do have to handle rosacea and sensitive skin with a kid gloves, but propolis is such an amazing anti-aging ingredient that can absolutely be a basis of a skincare routine for this type of skin type. So for my last two points, I'm going to talk about internal health and my take on it, as well as what a skincare routine would look like. So in my opinion, as you know, I am all about full body health and wellness. I think a lot of our skin ailments actually comes from imbalances in the body. If you guys have never watched uh, Dr. Ben Johnson, the formulator and founder of Osmosis, he is an amazingly interesting and smart gentleman. Um, I have a tendency to agree with him that there is an imbalance in the body. So if you do have sensitive skin, specifically rosacea, I really would recommend you start to incorporate prebiotics and probiotics into your routine and be diligent. Um, he actually suggests making sure that your prebiotic and probiotic has a uh, strain of this called bifida. And I actually take the RMS prebiotic probiotic again, and I'll put it in the description box. I love it, have noticed amazing results from it. Um, so I really recommend anybody with this 
really make sure your gut health is in check. Gut health really will read on the skin, okay? So getting that gut health in check, I honestly think will make an amazing difference. So prebiotics and probiotics. Secondly, I would recommend using a digestive enzyme. Basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna help break down your food, help your body allow itself to take all the nutrients it can from that food in a proper way and not store toxins in the body from that food. Um, toxins in our body, inflammation in our body comes out in our skin and that inflammation in my opinion and in what has been studied by many um, more of the I would say more on the neuropathic doctor scale um, and what dr. Ben Johnson teaches is it's basically about a whole body approach a very holistic whole body approach to skincare um, I really recommend you go watch some of his videos they're very very inspiring and eye-opening um, so really calming that inflammation down in the body will help calm inflammation down on the skin okay so food for thought start incorporating some of those amazing supplements again before you start any supplements please always talk to your doctor first to make sure it's appropriate for you all right so for the last part what does a skincare routine look like if you are suffering from rosacea and sensitive skin uh, first of all is taking out all those ingredients that we talked about you know specifically alcohols and your uh, glycolic as well as your um, alcohols and uh, sorry and fragrance and what it looks like is a very mel milky, gentle cleanser. An oil cleanser is totally fine first and then a gentle cleanser afterwards. And then layering on a bunch of products that's all about hydration, feeding the skin. Um, you absolutely can use growth factors for sure. Essences, gentle essences about hydrating. Um, vitamin C, you can use a gentle form of retinol, maybe that's diluted. Um, I'm studying up right now and starting to incorporate the new osmosis um, derivative, a derivative serum, and I have a lot of things to say about it. So that will be coming up very soon. Um, but get, you know, incorporating products like propolis and alzaic acid. Um, so you're going to notice all of these things are very gentle, making sure that you protect the skin when it's outside, sunscreen, 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 um, and making sure you're not you know overdoing the exfoliation on the skin. All right, so I know this is a lot to take in, uh, but I really hope this helps. This is one of those things that I get asked about almost every single day. I know it is a big concern, but it is, in my opinion, an internal issue and an external issue that needs to be addressed at the exact same time. Uh, again, thank you so much for being here. I hope this helps you kind of navigate a little bit of this, and I'll see you on the next one. Lots of love for me to you. Bye, loves.